Hey guys, hope you're all doing great. If you've been following this channel for a while, you probably remember I recently picked up an Insta360 ONE X. And while I loved the quality of the images and videos, um, I just wasn't in love with the mobile editing uh, on the iPhone, but it still did a great job. It just wasn't as streamlined as I'd like it to be. Well, Insta360 just released their new version of the Insta360 Studio for the ONE X and now you can edit video, re recapture everything right on a computer and it's just gonna make life a lot easier. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes and jump into that software and show you what, what, uh, what it can do. So let's dive in. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is launch the software. And once the software is open, you're going to drag your footage from the Insta360 camera over onto the footages area where it says drag and drop 360 degree video and photo here. You're going to wait for it all to load. And then once it loads, it's going to start playing right away. You can pause it and uh, come up with your game plan. But let's, uh, let's go over the interface first. So when you first launch the Insta360 ONE X Studio software, you're in the view mode. So this just allows you to preview your footage and you can jump from clip to clip if you have multiple clips over here on the left. I just have this one now, so I can't select for multiple clips because there are no other clips currently. So we'll, we'll just work with this one. By default, it's showing you the entire 360 video laid out in one flat plane. To see the different perspectives, up here on the left you can click on this icon and you have a couple options. Tiny Planet gives you that, well, Tiny Planet globe type look and you can manipulate that with your mouse. Next you have Crystal Ball, which is like a Crystal Ball. I, I was going to say it's opposite to Tiny Planet, but it's kind of different. It's basically like you're looking through a uh, glass orb. Next is the default view, oh, that was natural. Next is the default view, which is just the um, default perspective from the camera. Next you have natural view, and this is more the way you would see something through your eyes. This is probably where you'll spend most of your time um, working, is in the natural view. Then the last is flat, which is a, that's the default view that we started with. In addition to those views in, in this main view mode, we have a couple other options, a couple other things going on on the screen here. Well, first we've got export, which allows you to export your footage um, from the Insta360 software. That allows you to take it from the .insv file and export it as a uh, MP4. Then over here on the right, We've got stabilization. This allows us to turn the flow state stabilization on or off. Lock direction allows us to lock the way the camera is pointing. And then stitching here, we have just a couple different stitching options based on what cases you might have on your camera and um, whether it's under or above water. Um, then we have stitching calibration, just allows you to calibrate the way the 360 image or video is stitched. And then Logo setting gives us the option to throw a logo in at the base of the 360 uh, video or photo. Then over down here we've got take snapshot that allows you to just capture, capture a uh, screenshot of whatever you're seeing in the viewfinder. Um, this allows us to mark a trim endpoint. This is a trim start point. Um, go to trim start, go to trim end, and play of course. Let's go where we're all uh, really wanting to be right now, and that's in free capture. And this is where the change really has, uh, has come with this software. This is where we're going to be able to really create our videos. So first of all, we've got a couple different aspect ratios here we can play with. And I think it's probably a good idea to kind of decide what as aspect ratio you want to export before you even start editing. Um, because different aspect ratios are going to make what's in view 
change. So you've got one to one. This would be good for if you're exporting it to an Instagram uh, video and you want to maintain that one to one uh, square size that Instagram is famous for. You've got four by three, which is like the old school TV size um, before HD was a thing. You've got 9 by 16 and this will be perfect for Instagram stories or Snapchat or anything like that that takes advantage of the vertical layout of a cell phone. Um, 16 by 9 is what everybody's probably familiar with. This is your typical HD widescreen uh, video format. And then 235.1 is a extremely wide, more of like a cinematic anamorphic style um, aspect ratio. All right, so next we can uh, scale the timeline here. This allows us to zoom in or zoom out the entirety of the timeline. Um, and moving the playhead is as simple as just grabbing this here and moving around the timeline. So you can kind of fine tune where you are within the video. If you uh, have any experience editing video, a lot of this is going to be familiar to you. Now to position your camera, um, you just grab inside the view window here and just click and move, drag around. And you can, so we can start playing with keyframes here by let's let's select our start point of right there, and we'll click this little crosshair here, crosshair here, and this is a start. This will put a keyframe in. So that's our first keyframe, and let's move ahead to three seconds in the uh, timeline. Reposition the camera and add another keyframe. So now if we go back to the beginning and we play it, it's uh, tracking me because those two keyframes uh, transition between each other. So now if we want to do something more dramatic, we can add another keyframe here out a little further. And then let's say we want to go from this um, natural view to a tiny planet view. All we do is click this little tiny planet icon here um, position it how we want it. That looks good there. And now let's play it from here. And there we go. We just transformed into a tiny planet. And then if we want it to stay a tiny planet for a little bit, we'll add another keyframe and not change anything. And then we can jump ahead if we want to go back to natural perspective, add a keyframe and hit natural perspective. There we go. We'll position this so I'm in a frame. And now we go from normal to tiny planet and back again. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty cool. A lot of cool things you can do here. So let's dive into the keyframe settings a little deeper. So let's add a keyframe here and look at what we got. So we've got the different uh, perspectives here that we went over before. We've got the ability to delete a keyframe. Um, this here allows us to jump forward or ahead with the keyframe we just placed. So it allows us to move the keyframe incrementally. And then down here is just basically what we were doing with our mouse, but you can incre incrementally adjust the position of the camera here. Field of view and distance from, from the subject. So that is, in a nutshell, the finer tuning points of keyframing. So that's it. That's uh, that's basically the new Insta360 Studio software. I'm pretty happy with what they're doing and that we have this ability to natively edit Insta360 video right on a computer rather than having to rely on the mobile device. So let me know what you think. Have you guys used this software? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it working for you? Let, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I'll see you guys next time.